Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today for a random question and answer time. One question I get a lot is, a what herb is best for dot, dot, dot. Meaning people come in wanting to know about their various health issues and what herb I recommend for that particular issue. Now, here's here's a couple things I need to say right off the bat. I am not a doctor, I'm not a licensed nutritionist, not even a licensed herbalist. So the things that I know about herbs are mostly the ones that I grow myself for our own purposes and things that I've happened to take time to study, whether it be for our own health issues or loved ones that we have for their health issues. And so there's so many different types of health issues out there that I don't have it all up here. And though I study individual herbs and I might know, have learned of an herb that's good for this or that, it may not come to me like that without having to look it up for myself. So what I recommend is when you're looking into herbs for yourself, it's really easy to find what herb is best for what by simply putting in a search. And this is how you do it. Best herbs for, and then list whatever your health issue is. And then you should be able to get quite a few web pages that will tell you a list of herbs and uh, cross compare you know don't just go to one web page and then stop there compare all the different web pages and also be careful and i do say this a lot so those of you who followed me for a long time just bear with me because i think this is important information that all of us can be reminded of but anyway you make sure that you also look at who's funding each individual web page if you see a lot of ads for big pharma uh it doesn't mean that the information there is bad necessarily. It just means take some of the downplay that they may do on the herbs with a grain of salt and look into all the other things. On the other hand, don't stick with just homesteady, naturopathic type people. I think it's best to have a well-rounded edu education when you're looking at herbs because the other things you have to keep in mind is certain herbs should not be taken and used with certain types of medications or if you have certain kinds of allergies or with children or if you're pregnant and so on and so forth. So you have to take all these things into consideration and I can't do all of that footwork for you because I simply do not have the time and so I don't mind people asking questions don't get me wrong I just want to let you know that I'm not going to always have the answers to those questions and it's really best that you look into it for yourself now I will do videos and will continue to do videos on specific herbs and what they are good for and give you a list and I have a whole series of those that I will go ahead and link to down below but I have a whole bunch more that I'm going to do profiles on each one. But again, when you watch those videos, don't go by just that, just what I say. This is just based on my own research or how we use these herbs for ourselves and how they work for us. It doesn't mean it's gonna be the same for you. So I always stress doing your own research, looking into all the details for yourself, especially considering you know, your different health needs and medications and stuff. You know, it really is pretty simple. It just gets time consuming when you're trying to look at all the different herbs and what they're good for and whether or not you can even have it. And sometimes there are certain times where you just have to do trial and error to find out. But uh, again, make sure you understand the health, the possible health risks. But let me add to that, big pharma drugs have a long list, each one of them, a long list of those synthetic drugs of all the negative side effects with just a small possibility of whether or not they're gonna even work at all. Whereas an herbal remedy is gonna have a long list of benefits with a very small possibility that there could be a risk. There's always gonna be a risk no matter what you do, but. I still feel that no matter what you look at, you're always gonna be safer going with natural remedies. So again, don't just take my word for it though, do your own research. Now the next thing I get a lot is, uh, is it's actually two questions, but they mean the same thing. So it's either, have you written a book or will you write a book? Well, the answer is to the first part, no. I have yet to write a book. And to the second question, I don't know. <laughs> 
I keep thinking maybe someday I'll write a book. And th then I keep thinking eventually I'm going to reach a time where things will slow down. But ever since I started my YouTube channel, almost we're start we're going on 4 years. Things around here have continued to get more and more and more and more busy. I have yet to reach a point where things have started to balance out. And I don't know if it will ever happen. And so at this point, for me to have time to write a book, there's one of two other things that would have to go completely. That would either be my Etsy store, which is where we make most of our income, or that would be the YouTube channel. One or the other would have to go, maybe both. So I could simply make time to write a book and then still be able to keep up on my chores, my garden, and the other things that we have going on around here that are outside of YouTube and the Etsy store. So uh, if I ever do it, it might even be something where I'll do it in parts, but I just, I don't see this happening anytime soon and I'm sorry. Though I do appreciate people asking and the fact that people would even be interested in a book that I would write. I, sometimes it surprises me People even ask that, me, write a book? People would be interested in that. Okay, and then another one that has to do with research is that a lot of times I'll get people that will come in and ask me, do I have a video on blank? Again, I don't mind people asking these questions and when I have time to sit down and link you to a video I might already have, I, I can do that. But here's the other thing, our channel, uh, in the past couple months has started growing at a faster rate than it has in the first three years of our channel. And it's it's been kind of making it more difficult to keep up on, plus more orders coming in on the Etsy store, which is all great and wonderful. And I'm, I'm so blessed this has happened and grateful. However, with that comes a lot more comments and questions. And even though Patrick tells me, you can't an answer every single question, you're just gonna have to realize that I still try because I find the community really important and I don't want anyone to think that they're not important enough for me to answer their questions. So I don't mind it and I'm gonna do the best I can but to, in order to help take a little bit of the load off me, here's what you can do. Is if you're curious as to, and this goes for any channel that you're interested in, whether it be Doug and Stacy or Mary's Nest or Deep South Homestead or the millions of other channels there are out there, you know, Homestead Tessie. If you're wondering if any of these people have a video out on a specific topic, all you have to do is just go to your, your YouTube browser at the top. Now remember you have your regular search bar, then in the YouTube channel itself, there's two more search bars. There's one that's just YouTube in general, and then there's another one that you can go to on a specific person's page. Now, so there's two ways you can do this search. You can go to that specific person's channel and type in your search criteria there. But what's even easier yet is just to go to the just the general YouTube search bar, type in your search criteria and put the channel name. You can put the channel name before or after. So let's say you're wondering if I have a video on how to make vinegar, <laughs> which a lot of you know I have a lot of those. Simply put rain country vinegar or vinegar rain country and you should pull up a whole great amount of videos because i have tons of them if you're interested in whether or not i have a video on kombucha put kombucha rain country rain country kombucha you might pull up a video but it will have nothing to do with kombucha because i don't have a video on that I, yes i used to make it years ago long before i even knew what the name of it was and it became the big thing it is now uh, I used to make it, but that, I mean, I think that was probably back before I even had kids. So we're looking at at least 28 years ago. It was a long time ago, but I, I haven't done a video on it because kombucha is just not my thing. It is other people's. There's plenty of people that have videos on that. But anyway, my point is you wouldn't pull up any. So, uh, but at least you would find out, okay, she doesn't have any videos on kombucha. <laughs> But also make sure you check your spelling because sometimes spelling can can mess that up too. If you're spelling kombucha differently than the person who made the video, that might make it hard to find. But anyway, that's the best way to go. Or here's another example. How to make bread or bread. Maybe you're just looking for basic bread recipes. Bread, rain country, rain country bread. You're going to find those videos if you do that. And you should find a whole 
a bunch of bread making videos because I have pizza crust, I have uh, hamburger buns, I have a uh, basic yeast, just a basic yeast bread. Then I have different sweet breads, you know, quick breads, biscuits and stuff like that. So of course, I don't know if all of that, like the biscuits probably wouldn't pull up in there and the tortillas probably wouldn't either, but I might have to go add some, some uh, tags to those ones so you can pull those up too. And I also have a video on how to make your own egg roll wraps too. So that goes along with the breads. That's an easy way to find out that, you know, those videos for yourself, because also I forget sometimes how many, what videos I have on what, because we have, I, I haven't looked lately, but I know it's well over a thousand videos that we have out there. And so sometimes I don't even remember what I have. In fact, sometimes I do a video because I don't think I have it out there and find out, oh, I just did a video on this like six months ago or three years ago. And I just totally forgot that I even had it. I was thinking I never got around to it. So sometimes I'll have several of the same thing out there because of that. Okay. And then I get questions a lot of times on my treadle machine. People will see me sewing on my machine in my different craft time chat videos. And it does, it is a modern machine. It looks like an electric machine, but it's not. It was, and it was never converted to be a treadle machine. That's another question I get quite a bit. So I bought my treadle machine machine as a brand new machine from Amazon. Since then, the price has gone up quite a bit and things just keep disappearing right and left off Amazon now with things just being so crazy in the world. But I always have the link to my treadle machine down below. I've been using it for about eight years and maybe more. And from the day one, I love that machine and I will never go back to an electric machine. It is just, it is a better machine all around than any machine I've ever owned. I bought my first machine when I think I was 20 years old. And then before that, when I was living at home, I was using my mom's machine, but this is the best one I've ever had. And I love it. It's, it's fairly basic, but it, again, it's made to go with the treadle with a treadle table. So you can't just buy a, a treadle machine without a table. You do still have to have a table to go with it. So when you buy a brand new machine like that, usually the only time you're gonna find a, a sewing machine, a treadle machine with a table is when you buy it secondhand and usually it's gonna be antique, which is great. You can a lot of times find those on uh, eBay, maybe even Etsy and your Facebook market. These are some places to look, or if, even if you want to get the brand new machine, like what I have. And though I love the antique machines, the nice thing about the brand new one is that it has stitches that the antique ones don't have, such as the buttonhole and the zigzag and certain other stitches like that. Now my stitch I use predominantly over any other stitch is zigzag. And so that's, that one is very important for me to have. And that's why I went with that one rather than going with the antique. Uh, but if you get that and you're looking for a treadle table, uh, I was uh, blessed enough to have mine gifted to me from my mother-in-law many years ago, but treadle tables are not that hard to find. I, you can go on eBay. Again, you can look on your Facebook market. Sometimes you'll even find some people are just giving away. So if you're interested in going that route, uh, look there for your, for your treadle tables. I recommend it, especially if you're looking at being more self-sufficient, uh, and that my sewing machine, you know, the, one of my top sellers are my skirts and my aprons. And so, and then besides all the stuff I make for around here, I make quilts for us. I make uh, curtains. I make wall hangings and various things, homemade tea bags, cloth na napkins, you name it. I make all kinds of stuff with my sewing machine. And so it is, it is my life. And I have to have a machine that's gonna run whether we have power or not. And that is why I got it. I don't have to depend on power. And it's too far away from where I like to have it. It's too far away from any of our solar outlets that I would have to have long extension cords strung all the way across this big old room here because our solar outlets are that way. The closest one's over there, out there in the laundry room. And the sewing machine is way over there. We're talking about at least 40, 50 feet. I'm, I'm thinking maybe 50 feet right there. And so that's quite a ways. And then I'd be, this is where we walk. So it'd be tripping over the cord all the time. It's just not worth it. I love having the treadle machine. So uh, anyway, it's a good investment. Just like having the uh, country living grain mill, there's a few things I find the price worth it for investment. Uh, but again, just like our country living grain mill or the all American canner, these can be big expenses. These are things that are gonna last for a very long time. 
but you can still try to see if you can find these things secondhand. Uh, don't give up looking secondhand for things because sometimes people buy stuff like that, especially at a time like this. Oh, let's get canners, let's get this, get, let's get this. And then if things kind of get back to normal, then they just get rid of this stuff and sell it for half the price that they bought it for because they decide, no, I don't, that's too much work. I, I don't want to do that. Life is normal again. So why bother being prepared? <laughs> it happens. So anyway, don't, especially once this, I don't know if we'll be over with by the time you see this video, I'm kind of thinking not. So once all this is over with the current deal that we're globally dealing with, uh, I'd really start watching for these things to go on sale secondhand. I bet you'll be able to find a bunch of them. And then one more question I wanted to, to answer that we get quite a bit, especially from new people, is they wonder where we are and how much property we have. Well, we are in the peninsula of Washington State. Now, here's a little known fact for people that don't live in Washington State. Washington State, a lot of people think of as a rainy state. Well, that's actually not at all true. Uh, a good portion of Washington State is a very dry. I, in fact, grew up in that area, and there are certain sections that over, over there that are so dry, there's nothing but sagebrush. So it's almost like desert over there. But then in my uh, early 20s, I ended up over here. Well, I went to college over in the Seattle area, so I crossed over that mountain range. Once you get over that mountain range, the Cascades, suddenly it's a different climate. So, and that doesn't even make up half of Washington state, maybe a third. So only about a third of Washington state is wet. And then, so I lived in the Seattle area for a couple years and got used to going from about 10 inches of rain per year to about 50 inches of rain per year. And then I came here over to the peninsula and where we live gets the most amount of rain in Washington state. And that is 120 inches average. And so that was another big adjustment going from 50 to 120. So we get a lot of rain. We get, there's very few places around the US that get more rain than we do. I think there are a couple, but we're right up there in the top and we've actually been known to get as much as 160 inches of rain per year. And I say this a lot, a lot of people don't even know what their rainfall is. They might live in a place like Seattle that gets 50, a lot of people that live in a place that gets 40, 50 inches of rain per year, think they think that they get a lot of rain and then they can totally relate. Well, do a, just do a search, this is how you find out, is look on your, go into your browser, say annual average rainfall four, and then list your city and state. And then you'll find what your average annual rainfall is. And you'll probably find out most likely it's somewhere between 40 and 50 inches, uh, you know, if you think you've got a lot. Now, some of you I know in Louisiana probably get more than that, but, uh, at least it'll give you an idea of comparison that is chances are we probably get two, three, maybe even four times the amount of rain you do. It's uh, and a lot of people think they're jealous of the rain. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A lot of people think they love rain and they would love to live in a place that gets the kind of rain we get until they move here. And they, you can, they can usually only handle it for about one winter and it's hard. It is hard, it's a very hard. It took me a long, long, it took me years to adjust. And sometimes I still have times where it's like, will it ever end when your whole backyard is nothing but a mud hole and, and you about lose your boots trying to walk out to the chicken coop. So it's, uh, it's rough, but it does have its blessings. And one of them is we almost never have to worry about it being too dry and during the summer, it is beautiful here. It's lush and green and beautiful all the way around. We actually live very close to the Ho National Rainforest and, uh, and we have beaches not far from us. And so we have a lot of beautiful greenery and um, yeah, so it's, it's a lovely place to live, but it can, it does definitely come with its challenges when it comes to gardening. Now, I forgot to say, how much space do we have? Well, right here where we got started, is just a corner lot in the neighborhood. We, we've we lived here since we were married and we got into the homesteading thing more, ser you know, fairly seriously about eight or nine years ago maybe. And we started building just where we're at. And it's just a little shy one third acre lot. And uh, we've been, we still do all of our gardening right here. Now this last year in 20, spring of 2019, we bought a, another shy acre 
piece of property just up the road from us and it's very beautiful here's some clips right here so you can see what it looks like and yes we do plan on eventually expanding out there as far as some gardeny type stuff like maybe putting in some more fruit trees and and some other types of perennials things that don't require a whole lot of care and also things that we have to find a way to make it as elk proof as possible because the elk love to hang out on that property so uh yeah tall fences and i'm not really into putting up tall fences so it might just be kind of protecting some fruit trees until they get tall enough that the elk can't reach all the fruit <laughs> and then certain other perennials that the elk would be less likely to be interested in because blackberries grow wild around here so we might just try to kind of cult or kind of work with the blackberries that are growing there and uh, the elk don't bother them as much just because they're all over the place so and we love blackberries okay so that's where we are and eventually i'm thinking mr rain and i should do a video on uh, how we got here and Hello, what brought us to the point that uh, we chose to make this lifestyle that we have right here where we are. So be watching for that video to come out probably fairly soon in the future. It just depends on when I can get, you know, we both have time at the same time where we can sit down and shoot that video because that, that's getting harder too. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed my Q&A video. And if you have any more questions, put them down below. And maybe that will just, uh, even if I don't have time to answer it in the comments, that might be something where I can do another video down the road answering some more of your questions. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.